Hi everyone! In this relatively short video, I'll be showing you how to anneal two oligos together for oligo annealing cloning. So for example, let's say you were trying to clone a gRNA sequence into a Cas9 expression plasmid. What you would do there is you would get your gRNA sequence and design some oligos that have the gRNA sequence with a flanking sticky end here. You get both of those and then what we would hope would happen is if you mix these together in solution, the base pairs would find and bind one another to form this duplex over here that has a double-stranded region, that's your gRNA, your guide RNA, and then some flanking sticky ends here that we can use to then ligate this duplex into the Cas9 expression plasmid that has complementary sticky ends right there. All right, waiting to accept that uh, gRNA duplex. And that would give us the desired expression plasmid over here that expresses Cas9 and a guide RNA. However, uh, unfortunately, sometimes the situation is a little bit more complex than this because these single-stranded DNA oligos that we order uh, never forget that while we draw them as lines, simply linear molecules, uh, they can form these other secondary structures as well. And some of those secondary structures might actually be inhibitory. They might prevent the formation of our desired duplex down here. So for example, a given uh, ligo might actually form a hairpin. And so if this oligo is binding to itself, it wouldn't bind to the other oligo. Likewise, uh, we can also get self-dimers. That's where one oligo binds another similar oligo. And that structure might prevent it from binding the other oligo. Or we might get undesired interactions between the two different oligos as well. So these undesired heterodimers, this is not the duplex that I want here, for example, up in the top right, um, but it, and it might prevent both of these oligos from forming the desired uh, duplex. So to address this problem, what we do is we start by mixing the oligos, but we then incubate them at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes. And what that's going to do is it's going to melt apart any of these other undesired secondary structures here. And then, after that, we slowly cool the mixture down to room temperature over the course of 45 minutes. Now, that's a very important step there as well, because what that's going to do is it's going to cool the mixture slowly. And so as the temperature decreases, what should happen is we should hit a temperature at which this duplex forms first. Because this duplex has a lot of hydrogen bonding here, this should be the structure that forms first as we cool down. Then if we cool down farther, we would get to the point where these other secondary structures would form, but those would presumably be much lower temperatures. Therefore, we're giving the duplex the first opportunity to form before any of these other secondary structures reform, okay? So there you go. As long as we go through this, uh, we should get a lot of duplex formation, and then we'll have a lot of annealed oligos that we can use for cloning. So all that being said, let's see what this actually looks like in the lab. First of all, this is what your oligos are going to look like when you order them from a company. They're going to come in a what looks like empty tube because the oligos are lyophilized. So they're going to be in a clear pellet at the bottom of this tube. Don't worry if you can't see the pellet. It is actually there. So the first thing we need to do is resuspend that pellet. So we're going to take some ultra pure water. Has to be ultra pure water. We don't want any DNA or other types of metals contaminating the solution. So don't use tap water. Use ultra pure water. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take a volume of water that we need to resuspend these oligos to a concentration of 100 nanogram per microliter. That's what works best for annealing these oligos. So if you have 100 micrograms of oligo, you want to resuspend that in one milliliter of water to get that concentration of 100 nanogram per microliter. Once you have that water added, we're going to vortex for 30 seconds. Now this is a time lapse here, so it's going to go much faster, um, but we want to excessively vortex uh, these oligo pellets because sometimes they can be quite stubborn, uh, getting them to dissolve in the water. All right, but once we have those oligos hopefully resuspended after that vortexing, we're going to take a hundred, or sorry, <clears throat> we're going to take 10 microliters of each oligo. 
which will give us one microgram of each oligo, and we're going to mix them in a 0.2 ml PCR tube. So here I'm using a small PCR tube because the next thing we're going to do is incubate the samples at 95 C for five minutes. I prefer to do that in a thermal cycler. You can definitely do it in a water bath as well. I just find that the temperature in a water bath is somewhat unreliable. Um, so anyways, a thermal cycler only fits these small PCR tubes. That's why we're using the smaller tube here. All right, so I'm adding the second oligo here. And what you want to do is when you add that second oligo, pipe it up and down to make sure that these two oligo solutions are thoroughly mixed. That will give you the best uh, annealing there. All right, so we've got our sample prepared, and we're going to take that over to the thermal cycler and place that as close to the middle of the block as you can. That's where you get the most consistent temperatures. And I'm going to set the block temperature, as we said, to 95 degrees Celsius. We're going to have a hold time there of five minutes. Be careful here, make sure you put in 500 for five minutes. And then the lid temperature is gonna be 100 degrees Celsius. Remember the lid temperature has to be as hot or hotter than the block temperature to prevent any evaporated solution from condense, condensing on the lid. All right, so at the end of five minutes, uh, the thermocycler will beep and you should immediately take the tube out of the block. That's because the thermocycler will instantly start cooling the sample down to room temperature as soon as this run is finished. And we don't want that. We want the sample to slowly cool down so those duplexes have ample time to form before these other secondary structures form. So if you cool it down too rapidly, you might get a mixture of duplexes and other secondary structures. Um, so the best way we found to do that is to just remove the tube from the thermal cycler and put it in a rack and leave it there for about 45 minutes. Now you probably cool to room temperature a lot faster than 45 minutes, but that's what we've done previously. That's what we continue to do. Now, some thermal cyclers might have a feature called a ramp where you can slowly decrease the temperature from let's say 95 down to 25 degrees Celsius and it will let you specify you want them to happen over the course of 45 minutes but this BioRad T100 cannot do that. It does have a ramp feature but it goes much faster than we would like it to. It's something like 0.1 degrees Celsius per second um, which isn't 45 minutes. Uh, so there you go. Uh, once those oligos have cooled down uh, then the last thing you need to do is dilute them tenfold with ultra pure water. Uh, so for example, I've got 20 microliters total of oligos here. I would add 180 microliters of water to that tube. And what that'll do is it gets you down to the desired concentration for ligation. So that's about it. After this, you can move on to the video on ligation.